Hello everyone, it's Stephen from 355A, and today I'm going to be going over a couple common intake types and how they interact with the pushback game elements. So before we start talking about the actual intakes, I think it's important to bring up an idea that's been circulating online, um, and it's called the tongue mac. Something you can stick into the match load zone and keep the balls from sitting here and allow them to roll out. And this allows you to use different intake types besides just ones that can go on the sides here. So definitely consider how this mechanism could play into your intake design and how match loading is that it affect your strategy because that should affect how you build your intake. All right, so the first intake we're gonna talk about is the flex wheel pre-roller. Um, this is probably what everyone still has from last year, but there's a few different changes that can be made with these that I think you should consider. So there's first, obviously, there's wheel size. And I think that honestly, whatever size wheels you go with doesn't really matter this year. But I think what is important is the spacing between your flex wheels. You're probably gonna wanna leave some space for the ball to actually grab onto because on one like this, you're gonna need it to be spinning pretty quickly or uh, cut out some of the supports in the flex wheels. Uh, for it to be able to get in there smoothly. The next intake style we're gonna to wanna to talk about is uh, the side intake flex wheels, which is seeming to be a common thing as it's uh, the easiest way to get them out of the match load zones. Now this is gonna be really simple. This isn't obviously not motor powered, but just driving like this with some compression is gonna be able to intake the balls really easily. Uh, the only downside is your intake is probably gonna be pretty narrow so having some sort of funnel is gonna be useful there uh, or having them wider and having a second stage pre-roller on the top of that. Another common intake type is a rubber band intake. And a rubber band intake will use these rubber bands or these sprockets and that will allow you to intake the ball. This is a great option as it's really simple, it's really light, there's not a lot to it. Um, the spacing between the bands really helps the ball get in there and you get control of it quickly. Also, the ball can slide across really easily so you can start with a wider base and then bring it to a narrow part of your intake to funnel the balls up. The downside of a rubber band intake that I think you should be aware of is if you, a team has a side intake, it can be very easy to get some sort of entanglement call where you end up like this and now you're stuck for the match or your intake ends up breaking. So I'd definitely be aware of that. So with so many options to choose from for how to intake the balls, another uh, consideration that you have to have is what's gonna touch the ball first. So the first thing you could do that I wanna look at is a hard stop, right? It's just a hard push and it's gonna grab the ball and physically push it. This is nice because especially when you're going up to score on a taco, you would push it in there and that could be great for a top section of an intake. Another option would be flaps. Flaps also have the added bonus of having a little bit more push to it as a top layer. But if you wanted to use this as a bottom layer, what I would do is I would cut slits through these uh, pieces. That way they can bend over the ball a little bit better as a uh, front pre-roller. Another thing that Vex actually sells are these little intake pieces. Now I would warn you for these, I wouldn't go looking at buying these because they're a little bit too stiff in my opinion to get the ball well. I would actually, instead of those, because you know they are smaller, which is nice, helps you keep your intake compact, I would get flex wheels and cut the outside part off of them. This is gonna allow these inside pieces to cradle the ball and bring it in really, really efficiently. Finally, you have anti-slip mat. This is another good option, similar rubber bands as it can, the ball can move across it so you have a really wide intake, um, which is gonna help feed the ball up there quickly. It's pretty malleable and flexible. I am worried about the durability of it though, so that's something to keep in mind. The final intake design that I think teams will consider this year is some kind of catapult. Some mechanism that can hold the ball and then launch it up into the tubes. This is an over-under match loading catapult, so obviously not designed for this, but something that has a motor and a rubber band uh, rewind system that can really throw the balls in there. Now, this mechanism is gonna be very nice to help with scoring when the tacos are completely full and allowing you to 
maybe even have some sort of D score mech built off of it. That's all the intakes I have to talk about. I hope this video helps you guys decide what kind of intake you're going to build and how you're going to build it. Good luck this season.